Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by Big4AccountingFirms.com and the Big Four Accounting Firms YouTube channel. Before we get started, just wanted to remind everybody to support us if you have a chance or if you can. Even a dollar helps. And we have a link in the description to a website called Buy Me a Coffee. It's just a way to donate to us and support us. Again, any amount is helpful so that we can keep putting out content. And there's also other ways for you to support us in the show notes to this podcast or on YouTube in the description. In today's podcast, we're going to be talking about vaccine management again. Last week, talked about how ENY won some work related to the COVID-19 vaccine management systems. And I, in that podcast, spoke about how the big four accounting firms were going to win ton of this, a ton of this government work and COVID-19 work. And it turns out that Deloitte had already won vaccine work. And there's a ton of articles recently written about them and how they screwed up the vaccine management work that they won. There's an article on Business Insider, and on the article, it looks like Deloitte mismanaged vaccine work that they won from the CDC in the United States, which is the Center for Disease Control. And the CDC signed a $16 million contract with Deloitte to create a website where states could schedule their vaccine appointments, and they won this in May 2020. And Deloitte received another $28 million in December of 2020. And that brings the total that Deloitte won to $44 million related to vaccine management with the federal government. And states could choose to opt in, but many states decided not to opt in because of Deloitte's site was not that good, and they saw a lot of issues with it. And so far, Deloitte's system has only helped administer 4% of the United States' vaccines. And the system has many glitches, including canceling appointments with no notice. And Deloitte came up with an excuse that the system has more scope than was initially thought, and it had no downtime for updates. Basically, they're saying it wasn't meant to be a centralized site for managing everything, and they compared it to having a centralized site for managing your taxes, and they're saying that doesn't exist. But yet they tried to build this for the federal government, and they're doing the best they can. And this is something frequent that happens in the big four, right? They, they just bid on these contracts, and you, you sketch out a number. I mean, obviously, it's a huge number. And they don't really scope it out. They don't understand, you know, COVID-19 is something really big. And administering a vaccine it's going to involve a lot of steps, especially between states and coordinating with Department of Health websites. And it turns out that they didn't probably budget enough or they didn't have the employee technical knowledge because many experts say that the work should have gone to a company like Google since it's a technology-based solution and it's a Google-sized model or Google-sized problem. And they say that Deloitte's technology relies on a fixed waterfall model and that can't handle many changes. And Deloitte's spokesperson said that this website hasn't really been down for improvements. So there's a lot of glitches and the site really hasn't been improved. But that's another thing the big four do. They'll, they'll bid on work that they're not qualified for. And I've spoken about this many times on this podcast, that them getting into this COVID-19 stuff and this unemployment website stuff, because if the federal government had done research on Deloitte, they would have seen that they mismanaged a lot of government websites for unemployment. However, that's the problem with having a large federal government with a, lar- with a lot of moving pieces inside of it. Like the CDC is only one part of the federal government. And they don't necessarily talk to other parts of the federal government. So they don't know what Deloitte has worked on. But not only that, they also haven't necessarily talked to states and their experiences with Deloitte, because if they had, they would have saw that Deloitte gets over their skis and they're getting into technological solutions that they're not very experienced in and and they're messing them up a lot and they'll win hundred million dollar projects and they're just mismanaging people's money, uh, letting people's customer data get released on the internet. It's a ton of crazy stuff that's going on. And, And I mean, now hopefully people's personal health information doesn't get leaked onto the internet. But that wasn't the only article written about Deloitte with regards to vaccine management. The New York Times also wrote a lovely article about Deloitte 
and how they basically might have stolen the idea from an African-American woman named Tiffany Tate. And she says that she was bidding on this work too. She bid less, and she had been working on the solution for years, since 2009, since she saw the mismanagement of the H1N9, H1N1 vaccine, or I don't know if there's a vaccine, but she was just working on a solution related to vaccinations to where people could track it. And she had partnered with a third-party contractor who had experience working with government institutions. So basically, she was the perfect person to give this work to. And not only do they not give the work to her, she's claiming that Deloitte might have stolen her idea, and I think another company is as well. But uh, I don't know if Deloitte actually stole anything, because if they stole something, then they stole a really crappy version since it's not working, and a lot of states don't want to use it. Am I, it's interesting that in this social justice environment that the federal government didn't hire her or that Deloitte didn't partner with her because she seems to have all the experience. And it's also, she was in meetings where Deloitte was present. So that part seems interesting to me. But that's not the end of the story. Deloitte just won another project in New York to help them with their vaccine rollout. So this is about to get very interesting. The big four accounting firms are winning tons of this work. $44 million is a lot of money. And that's why we're discussing this today. You have to remember the big four accounting firms audits, for the most part, don't get up to $44 million. So this would be one of Deloitte's largest audit engagements if it were audit. So that's why I'm saying this government work is huge. It's a huge opportunity for the big four accounting firms. They're going all in on it. That's why they're coordinating with institutions like the World Economic Forum. That's why they're working together to build coalitions like that International Business Council. And ENY is winning work for COVID management. Deloitte's winning work for COVID management. I'm sure the other two are winning it too. And there's just tons of work. And $44 million is a ton of money. And they probably still didn't they still didn't ask for enough money. They have no idea how much money this stuff costs, and they obviously need more because they didn't build it correctly. So this is going to be tons of work. They're going to have to probably clean up their own work, or the big four accounting firms are going to do what they always do, which is clean up each other's work. For example, when one of them has an accounting restatement, another one comes in to fix it. So the same thing will probably happen here. And this is probably why the big four accounting firms are hiring so many people right now after they laid them off, because all this government work is now coming in. Deloitte just won a new project in New York. They still have this federal stuff they have to fix. So this is there's only more to come from this. So that's the podcast for today. To get future podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Also, make sure to financially support us if you can through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the show notes to this podcast. And subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video on our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening.